look. So now we're going to look at three gas laws. Uh, and we're going to look at the relationships of these three properties of gas. We have pressure. Good pressure. Time. Gas pressure. This is when the number of collisions happen. High pressure right now. Low pressure. Okay? Pressure is the number of collisions, the gas particles. We have temperature, which is a measurement of the, the average kinetic energy. How fast are they moving? They're moving fast, so they're moving slow. And then we have volume, which is the amount of space the gas occupies. So how much space is available? So those three things we're going to look at when we look at these three gas laws. There's three gas laws that involve the three properties of gas. And we use this. What you can use a popsicle stick and write the letters on the popsicle stick. And I'm going to, instead of using the popsicle stick for demonstration, I'm going to use this. In the middle of the popsicle stick, you're going to write the letter T. It's going to stand for temperature. And then on one end of the stick, you're going to write the letter V for volume. And on the other end of the stick, you're going to write the letter P for pressure. The first law we're going to look at is the relationship between pressure and temperature. And that's called Hamilton's law. So, Hamilton's law states that there is a direct relationship between the pressure and the temperature of a gas. Here I have my popsicle stick. T is in the middle, and P and volume on the other sides. If I'm looking at pressure and temperature, I'm looking at these two. Temperature, pressure. I'm going to hold the volume. So I'm going to hold it constant. So in other words, in, if you hold the volume constant, you're not going to change the volume. The volume is going to stay the same. <coughs> Woo! So if the volume stays the same, and I'm going to increase the temperature, let's say. I'm going to increase this T. So we're going to just indicate that by moving the popsicle stick up and down. So this would be decrease. There's the increase because T is here. Up. All right? If temperature goes up, what happens to the pressure? It's also going up. Direct relationship. If the temperature goes down, what happens to the pressure? Pressure is going down. Direct relationship. One goes up, the other goes up. One goes down, the other goes down. If you think of temperature, remember, temperature is how fast the particles of gas are moving. Right? So higher temperature, they're moving faster. So if you increase the speed that the gas particles are moving, you're going to also increase the number of collisions they have. Right? Just like when you drive. If the faster you're going, the, probably, the more chance you're probably going to get in an accident. So collisions. All right? This, and remember the collisions are a way of demonstrating pressure. So the more collisions, the higher the pressure. So therefore, the faster the molecules are moving, more collisions, more pressure. So remember, speed of the molecules is a way of measuring the temperature. So in other words, the higher the temperature, the more pressure. So if you're driving a car, you're increasing the speed, which is, remember, going to indicate everybody's, let's say, on the highway 280, everybody's flying 100 miles an hour, high speed. So if we indicate each car is an atom, right, or a molecule, and they're moving high speed. So that would be high temperature, right? High kinetic energy, moving fast. If they're moving fast, they're going to collide more. They're going to have crashes. Right? And let's say, especially in a gas, because they're not all going one direction, like on a highway. Right? So they'd be moving all different directions in a gas. So the cars will be moving every which way, 100 miles an hour, high speed. You're going to have crashes, and those collisions are indicating pressure. It says that there is a direct relationship between temperature and pressure in a gas. So just like getting on the highway, or not even the highway, woo! Pretend the cars on in Silicon Valley. This is Russia.
rush hour. All right, the cars represent molecules. And we're gonna say they're going very fast. So that indicates it's a high temperature. So they're flying, they're going 150 miles an hour. And they're not just going in one straight line, like on a highway. So if they're representing a gas, they're moving all over the place. And if they're moving fast, they're gonna collide more than if they were moving slow. It's like they drive slower, you have less chance of getting in an accident, less chance of collision. So when you're moving fast and you're moving all different directions, there are going to be a lot of collisions. And the collisions of gas particles are the pressure. That indicates the pressure of the gas. So more collisions, higher pressure of the gas. The second gas law relates the volume and the pressure. So now we're looking at the extreme ends of the popsicle stick. So this is called Boyle's Law. So Boyle's Law states that there is an inverse relationship between volume and pressure of a gas. So here I have my popsicle stick to demonstrate. In this case, we're looking at the relationship between volume on one end of the popsicle stick and pressure on the other end. Temperature's in the middle. In this case, we're going to hold the temperature constant. So we're not going to change the temperature. So let's hold it. Hold it constant. If I were to increase the volume, so this end's going up, what happens down here? Pressure goes down. What happens if I decrease the volume? Pressure goes up. Inverse relationship. This reminds me, I used to do baton. Do three. One, two, three. you do that. And you're looking at Boyle's law. The temperature is kept the same. So in other words, you are not changing the speed of the molecules. So let's think about it now. If we have, we're going to relate this to the cars driving on 280, but they're going different directions because it's a gas. And gas, they don't just... Uh, the uh, particles in a gas are moving chaotically, all right? So, but if we keep the speed the same, so we're gonna say everybody has to go 60 miles an hour, they're not gonna increase the speed or decrease the speed. So the temperature's constant. The atoms remember the cars, or the molecules of cars. And we're gonna increase the volume, okay? So let's say now we're going to expand the highway. So instead of a sixth lane highway going one direction, it's it's twice that. It's 12 lanes going one direction. But then remember again, they're not going one direction, but you're, you're going to increase the lanes on the highway. So there's more space. So what do you think that's going to do to the number of accidents? There's more space. They're more spread out. So you have less accidents, right? Less collisions, less chance to collide. And remember, collisions are a measurement of the pressure. It's less car crashes, less pressure. If the temperature is the same, everybody's driving the same speed. We're not speeding up, we're not slowing down. Cars represent the atoms of the molecules. If we increase the volume, which is this side, we expand the lanes on the highway. We have more lanes going different directions. We have more lanes, the cars are gonna spread out. They have a less chance of hitting each other. So the collisions are going down. However, if we decrease the volume, so instead of six lanes going each way, we're gonna bring them down into two lanes going each way. So now you're going, they're going all these cars are gonna be packed tightly together. The pressure's gonna go up, they're gonna have more collisions more car crashes. Pressure's going to go up. So remember those collisions are a measurement of those car crashes. The speed the cars go, that's the temperature. The volume is the space. So think of it as the car crashes or the cars in traffic. And you'll never forget. So Boyle's Law states that if you increase the volume of a gas, you will decrease the pressure. So there's an inverse relationship between volume and pressure. The 
next law. The next gas law is called Charles law. And this relates temperature to volume. In this case now, you're gonna hold the pressure constant. Pressure, I hold. So I'm holding pressure on the popsicle stick or your popsicle stick, right? If I increase the volume, temperature's going up, right? If I decrease the volume, temperature's going down. Direct relationship between volume and temperature. Charles Law states that the volume of a gas is proportional to its temperature. Uh, so if one, if the temperature goes up, volume goes up. Temperature goes down, volume goes down. Volume goes up, temperature goes up, volume goes down, temperature goes down. Direct relationship between volume and temperature. If we hold the, the pressure constant and we increase the volume, okay, so the, we have more space. And this is, if you think of more space, so we've expanded the lanes on the highway. Speed, which is temperature, will also increase. They've got more lanes, just like when you get in and then once you pass the toll booth, you have more lanes and there's more volume. And when you do that, people start speeding up. They drive off, fly. They're like, they're going 10 miles an hour in two lanes and all of a sudden you got 50 lanes just spread out you know, 100 miles an hour. So this is like, if you increase the volume, then the temperature's gonna go up. They're gonna, people are gonna be flying around, they're gonna drive faster. If you decrease the volume, you're, going, you're approaching a toll booth, or there's construction and they're narrowing the lanes, you gotta merge into one lane, the volume of the roads goes down. You're gonna drive slower. Temperature's going down. Remember, temperature's indication of the speed. The average speed. So that is a way of remembering the laws.